<clears throat> Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. I am Shannon and today we are going to create. We are going to have fun. Um, I love coming to you guys live on Thursdays at 145. I always have so many projects that I want to do and um, I never know which one to do because um, there's just so much that I want to do and there's so many products and there's just so many cool things that I see and I get inspiration from other people's projects. And anyway, so um, that's why I love coming on and just working and playing. I have two things that we're going to start today and then um, probably we'll come back to it tomorrow, hopefully. And um, we're going to just have some fun. So the first thing we're going to do, um, I have two of these. Let me just show you real quick. I have two of these silver plate oops, cake <laughs> cake stands and I've already prepped this one. It's got two layers of chalk paint on it and what we're going to do is we're going to use a IOD paint inlay on this one. Now the paint inlays can be a little intimidating but they are a lot of fun. Let me get this right. There we go. <clears throat> now hey Cheryl thanks for joining me today. Um, hey Linda I love it when I have people pop on. This that makes it makes me happy. Um, okay, so today with this one, I actually have two of them. One's they're both prepped, but this one we're gonna put a paint inlay on. The paint inlays are by Iron Orchid Designs, and they have let me see if I can get the top here real quick. They have all different ones. I think there's I don't know, 15 different ones or something like that, but this one is the melange, and this one is nice because it has bite-sized pieces. They're smaller. You can learn with like a little bee or just some flowers or something. Some of them are really big patterns, and they're a little bit more intimidating, or they're repeating patterns, and those can be intimidating also because if you don't have them all lined up correctly, it could be a mess. But what I have chosen to use on this is I'm going to use this part. See these beautiful flowers? Um, and there's a little bow down here. I'm not really crazy about the bow. I might cut that bow off, but the bow lets me know that this is the way the flowers are supposed to go. Um, now for those that are, are new to paint and lace, paint and lace are really a whole different, um, creation. There's actually, this, this is paint on here. So this is paint and we're going to take this paint off of here and put it onto here. So it's kind of like a, you know, a tattoo that you used to get when you were a kid. Um, so we're gonna I'm gonna cut that out. Now, when you are applying the paint inlay, you want to be um, mindful of how you put it on. Whether you use paint or you use a clear coat, you definitely want to make sure that you use enough paint or clear coat. You want to use enough of the product to make the paint and like go down to your surface. Now this one's a little bit tricky because see this little concave right here? That has a little bit of a, you know, concave. So we're gonna have to make sure we get it in there. I'm gonna be putting on this paint and lay today with the Dixie Belle. I'm using cotton, the bright white. It's a beautiful color. Okay. And it's just chalk, chalk paint. Ooh, good. Yeah, Nancy, these trays are so much fun. Oh, Judy, yeah, I'm glad you're here. Um, remember, holler if you need me, Judy. And let's see, I'm gonna grab this brush right here. Gotta put my eyes on because I have old eyes. <laughs> so the first one, I'm just making sure, I just cleaned my brushes, so I wanna make sure I get all the excess water off. I'm going to just pick up some of the chalk paint. Now, I already have two coats on, but you need to put these paint inlays on when the when your paint is wet. You always want to make sure the paint is even. Now, that is equivalent to like one layer of paint. When you put these paint inlays on, if you want a nice, crisp, clean impression, you need to put on another layer. You need to at least double what you would normally put on. It needs to be thick but even and when I say thick I don't mean you know overly thick but just enough that the paint from the paper is going to transform and impose on there okay so essentially like it's like the paint on the 
cake stand is going to steal the paint inlay off the paper. So I'm going to start in the middle because it is concave. And then I'm just going to kind of push around from the outside. Now I think I missed some paint here and down here because I didn't realize that my design was so big. So I'm just going to fold it back and I will just make sure I have paint there. Oh, I do have paint there and do have paint there. So I did cover it. Okay. So now I'm just going to lightly press my paint inlay into my wet paint. Now, if I wanted a less, a less of an imprint, more of a distressed look, I would use a little bit less of paint. But I want a nice, good, crisp imprint. All right, so let me just put my brush away. Now, next what I need to do is I just need to spritz it with a little bit of water, and then I'm going to take a cloth, and I'm just going to push it in. So I'm just using my mister, and you don't need a lot of water. Now I'm just kind of setting it into the paint. Now sometimes when you take your paper off, you'll see some wrinkles. So if you've ever watched anybody do a paint inlay before, and they pull it off and they have these little wrinkles, it's just because, like here, you can see I have a wrinkle there. It's because I've got a lot of paint there and it's not even. So I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to smooth some of these out. I don't mind the wrinkles because I like, I think it adds a little bit of character to the inlay because the inlays are not meant to be perfect. And you can tell that by the design because some of the designs, they're missing some lines. So it's definitely meant to look already aged and distressed. A nice thing about the inlays is that you can use them again. It'll just be a lighter impression. All right. So now what I need to do is I just need to let this sit. What I need to do, the paint will dry and then we will take that off and it won't, I don't think it'll be today, but I'm going to probably pop on back tomorrow and we'll, we'll finish this and then we will decorate it because I have some fun ideas to go on top of this. So let's move to the second one. Put that down. Okay, now this one is, <laughs> this one's going to be fun. <laughs> Hold on, let me grab it. Ooh. So here's another one. This one's a little bit more fancy, the edge. See the edge? Now look what I have already. Hey, Shannon. Um, look what I have already put on here. This is the rooster from the IOD Stamps La Champagne. I'm really awful. IOD would probably kill me, but I'm really bad at their names. They have such Frenchy names, and I took German in high school. I don't know anything French, except for French fries. Hey, Sandy. Wow, thank you, guys. I appreciate y'all joining me. Okay, so look how cute this tray is. This is another cake stand. Anytime I find silver or silver plate at the thrift store, I buy it, especially if it's a few bucks. I My favorite are the compotes. I don't really do much with them, but I just collect them. They remind me of my mother growing up, but... Um, I get all the silver bowls, all the cake stands. I just love them. Um, okay, this is stamped with the IOD ink. It's permanent, so it is on there. And this one is concave, too, so I had to go back in and I had to re-stamp because when I stamped it the first time, it missed that whole circle. But um, So uh, I'm going to... I have a video of how I started all this and what I do is I take all these videos, I'm going to put it all together, make one project and I'll throw it up on YouTube. Um, even though I'm live on YouTube also right now, um, I, like, I like to have the complete videos option too for all the people that are going to catch on the replay. But let's focus on this. So what I like about this guy is he is, just look at the detail. The IOD sisters, they really know how to add the detail to all of the products that they use. They use with whether it's the stamps, the molds, the transfers, the paint inlays, the details are just incredible. So I need to make him look better. So look at this. See this guy? <laughs> We're gonna have some fun with this. And what I have here, these things are amazing. 
These are just watercolor brush pens. I've had them for a while because I've been wanting to start my junk journal, in which I finally have started. But these, I dug them out, and it, I did a different project on a silver tray, which I have a video coming on that one. But these are just a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imitate the colors that are on that rooster there. So I'm looking for a pretty red. Here we go. So I'm going to try to... Um, Hi, Diana. California. Wow, I'll be out there in two weeks. I can't wait. So these are nice. They're already loaded. It's with watercolor, and you can just put it on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around this edge right there. And I don't have to um, totally color it in because what these kids come with these water pens. And you can pick up these water pens anywhere. I love them because all you do is you just can just take the colors, the color that I just put on, and I could feather it in and make it lighter, shade it darker. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this just so you can see um, more up close. Let's see, a little bit closer. I really want you to be able to um, see this. Okay, and still see me. <laughs> All right, so let's get the red again. And so he's got like some red on his feathers and a little bit. Um, they're kind of different, but I'm just going to put, put some in here. And you don't have to worry about being sloppy or anything because you just come back with your water pen and you just blend it all together. Now this is just one of the steps that I'm going to be doing. This little tray is going to have several layers. I have recently been introduced to pent art for those of you that have been following me um, from Teresa Decoupage Queen and I just love all of the pent art. I've been playing with them. I'm really getting to know all the products and um, it's just so much fun. All right, so let me get an orange. This kind of brings you back to elementary school when you're coloring, right? <laughs> now, and this chicken here, he's kind of got like a dark brown and an orange together, kind of. So, now watch what happens when I take my little watercolor pen. I can kind of blend them together. And I can just pull some of that orange down. Look at how pretty that is. And I could take, um, where's that red? Put some, there, it looks like there's a little red. I can put just a little line like that. But then I just take my water and I just kind of pull it down, kind of blend it. See? See how easy that is? And you can obviously paint your chicken whatever color you want. You could, it could actually, you could even make it um, browns. Chicken, rooster, hen. <laughs> they're all they're all roosters to me. All right, so now we need some funky blue and some orange. Let's put some more orange over here. And if I get any out of the lines, it's okay because I can even come back with white chalk paint, cover it up, or I can just leave it. Oh, it is fun. I mean, it's not, um, let me put that up there. It's not that it's, you know, hard. It's, it is fun, especially if you're an artist, artiste and you know how to shade, then you'll really have fun with these. But these pens are awesome. I just got them on Amazon. They weren't that expensive either. So I definitely love playing with them. Let's see. Now we need some some blues and some greens. This one looks like a good one. This one's called Dark Cayenne. So let's let's do his tail. So, oh yeah, that looks good. Now again, I'm just putting. I'm really trying to stay on the darks because then what I'm doing is I'm taking the water and I'm pulling it to the white areas. So it looks like it's shaded 
a little bit more in the darker areas. And I'm sure a real color watercolor artist will have some better tips, but I'm fairly new to this. And what's really cool is with this set, it came with a, a watercolor pad and like um, a free class. I haven't taken the free class yet, but it's there if I want it. Okay, so now I'm just taking my water pen and now I'm just going to kind of spread out and shade the feathers that I just painted with the blue. So some areas will be darker, some will be lighter. But look, see how cutie is coming along? And if I accidentally, you know, use the water pen to push too much blue away, I can always go back in with the other blue and add it. Okay, so it looks like it has a little shade of a tinge of green. So I'm going to find a nice green. Let's do this one. And I'm going to simply add a little bit of green in here. And then come back a little bit with my water pen. Oh, look at that. Cool. Lucky's coming to life. <laughs> and that's simply, and you know, you can tell that um, I'm just kind of going kind of fast. You don't have to be perfect with it. You just have to just have fun and just try it. Don't let you being a little scared or intimidated of it to not try it. Because you know what? If this turns out awful, I just paint over it. Simple as that. All right, so we need to figure out what's going on here. So that's more blue. So let's get some more of this blue. I'm not sure how long these pens last. This is only, um, I've only used them a handful of times. But I'm going to take a little bit of the blue up. This pack that I have came with 54 different colors. So I imagine it's going to last me for a while because a lot of the colors are very similar. Put a little green in there. Absolutely, because you know what? Sometimes you don't want to think. Sometimes you just want to escape. You just want to have, just let go and have fun and not think. I tell you what, when I'm painting furniture, for me, it's it's therapy. I just love to sit there and paint. It's just, um, I don't have to think about anything except for that I drip my paint. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take a little yellow. Looks, I think it needs a little highlight of yellow in a few places. So see that? Um, I like the yellow and put some yellow over here on his wings. Now I'm not really sure what color his legs are. I can't tell. What color are chicken legs? <laughs> I don't really eat them. I don't normally paint them. <laughs> I'm sorry. That probably was not very funny. Um, let's make his eye a little blue. Put a little blue in there and then I'm going to just spread that out a little bit. Um, I think maybe they're, gosh, I don't know what color. Are they orange? Chicken legs? Why can't, or they're yellow. Yellow. Okay, there we go. Ta-da. Now this is looking a little dark. Part of it's the shadow. The other part is this heavy detail of the um, stamp. But we're going to go with um, like a dark, there we go, dark yellow is orange. That's what color we are going to make his legs. So I'm going to zoom back out just so you can see me as I'm doing his little leggies. There we go. See, it looks pretty good, right? <laughs> Not too bad considering that I'm kind of just you know, haphazardly adding a little color here, a little color there. Just goes to show that it doesn't have to be perfect. 
You don't need to stress over it. Just have fun. Okay, so there, I think that's a good color for his, his legs, right? <laughs> uh, okay, let's not worry. Water coloring a stamp and furniture painting two different animals. Yes, they are. But I just find them, uh, they're both very relaxing for me. Well, yeah, generally. As long as it's not a custom paint, there is nothing more stressful than when you have to custom paint for somebody. Um, I always worry about, are they going to like it? Um, is this the right color? You know, just, just too much. So I now have hired a custom painter and she handles it all for me. And I love Michelle. She's the best. She's Bold Soul Studio. Okay, so there is the rooster. Now watch what we're going to do with this one. I'm just going to um, clean up my little pens real quick. I'm not going to put them back where they go because that'll take me too long. I'll do that off camera. So basically, we have put this on, and these are watercolors. Now, I would need to seal it. And that their watercolors, they will smear very easily, just like the paint inlays. So I'm going to dry this just for a second with my heat gun, but then we're going to use some varnish. And I'm going to tell you a little trick. Some of you probably already know, but this is a trick for some of you that don't know on how to seal watercolor without it smearing. Let me just grab my... I definitely just want to just double check to make sure that it is dry. But look how cute he is, right? <laughs> And I'm going to leave the other one out for a minute because I am just, I'm very happy the way he turned out. Not perfect, but it's good. Does anybody, do any of you guys have these watercolor pens? Have you used them before? I mean, you could see how super easy they are. If you don't have them and you like to do stuff like this, I highly recommend them. You don't have to get the big set like I have. You can They have smaller sets, but they're really not that expensive on Amazon. And I know they have them at Hobby Lobby, I believe, too. I'm sure they have them at every craft store. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to seal this first layer with just a um, solvent-based I'm going to get my wrist off there now. A solvent-based varnish. So that should not interact with the watercolor. It should be. I tested it. I've tested it a couple times. It should work. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> so I'm just going to give it a nice light coat real quick. Of course, I'm going to start at his feet just to make sure. Now, the thing with the solvent-based, it is smelly. But... Just make sure you're in a well-ventilated vent 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 area. Now look, see I put that on and it's not smudging. It's because it's solvent-based, chemicals, whatever, they don't interact with the watercolor, so it is not going to smear. So this is a trick. So if you're doing something and you don't want it to smear, um, use this. Look at that. Okay, Shannon, let's see. I have them, but I struggle with getting the water out. Oh, really? Okay. Um, I struggle with, um, I have one with the clear water, and I can't get the water out. And I'm wondering if it's just because it's a, not as nice of a water brush as some of the other ones, like a more expensive one. Because the set that I got here has a nicer one, and the water comes out really easy. But the, my cheaper one, it's really hard to get the water out. All right, look at that. So see how easy that was and without it smearing. I'm just going to go ahead and give the whole thing one quick layer just so it's even. But we're not done. <laughs> we're going to do some more to this. And it all depends on how fast this stuff dries on if we can do more today or not. <coughs> Woo, gotta get that covered up. Okay, so look how pretty that looks right now. 
Isn't that gorgeous? And how easy was that? A little bit of chalk paint, stamp, some watercolors. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say you're cheap or you buy cheap stuff, but I'm just saying I've noticed that with my stuff that I have a nice one and a cheap one, and it does make a difference. <laughs> yes. I've seen, okay, uh, My Three Sons says, I have seen creators use a spray bottle with water down top coat. After it dries, you can use a full on top coat. Absolutely. And that's what I used to do until I discovered this because you know what? I have sprayed it with the top coat before, sprayed it even twice, went to put on my water-based, and I tell you what, it's still smeared because I missed certain areas where I missed because of the spray. So with this, you can't go wrong. I um, showed it to IOD and they have a little video on their Facebook page on it too. Um, so, but okay, Shannon, here, let me put that up. What is the sealant you're using? Would a liquid patina work? Okay. So I got to be quite honest with you. I don't know what liquid patina is. I think that's from DIY paint. I've never used it. If it's water-based, no, don't use it. This is by Pentart. This is clear varnish gloss. It comes in matte. But my all-time favorite is this one. This is solvent base two. This one has a little bit of a amber color to it, so it makes it look like it's old. Now these are guaranteed to not make your water, your paint and lay, your watercolor smear. So that's why I have stopped spritzing it with top coat. If that's all you have, then absolutely do it. 50% water, 50% clear coat, spray it. But I find this is just way easy. I don't even have to worry about it. Um, all right. Oh, Shannon, I know. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't calling you cheap. <laughs> all right. So this is drying. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, some more coatings on top. Like I have fine line crackle. I have classic crackle. I have transparent gel crackle, and I'm going to be doing one on each of them. Um, but I can't do, like both of them are still wet right now. Like the paint inlay is definitely not ready. This will be ready though later today or tomorrow. I'll probably do it tomorrow. I like to come on two days in a row. I like to, I love finishing these projects. This one is still wet too. I can dry it and we could probably keep going. So that's probably what I'll do. But before I do that, um, oh, you're welcome, Nancy. Um, Oh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'll probably do the fine line on this one to make it antique and porcelain because it does have that, that kind of look to it. Um, and then this one, I'll maybe use a transparent. I don't know. Okay, Cheryl says, okay, my mind is blown. I never knew this and I have this clear varnish. There you go, Cheryl. And I got to be quite honest with you. I discovered it by accident. About a year ago, I did a huge door with the Chateau inlay. Gorgeous. I love it. And um, I started putting the fine line crackle on and I was like, I forgot to seal the paint inlay and it didn't smudge because I was using the solvent base. So it worked perfectly. And then I tested it out and it does work. So anytime you go from water to solvent, it's going to be fine. All right, so let me dry this real quick, just for a second. And <laughs> Cheryl, I think you have an art store at home. Well, I tell you what, Cheryl, you're not the only one. I now do too, because now that I've started the second page with creating with Shannon, I love doing this kind of stuff, and I get up at, I get up really early like four o'clock just naturally so i love to come in here and just create so now i have one of everything at home and one of everything at the shop That's pretty much <laughs> this but it's fun okay so this is almost dry the concave part looks a little weird because it is um, you know, it, it's not flush, but 
in person it doesn't look as crazy as it does on the screen. Alright, so that's pretty well dry. Now what we're going to do is this edge, why this is cooling off because it's really hot. <laughs> we have, these are the ones I have at home. I need to order more from Decoupage Queen. I always order a couple, try them out, and if I like them, I get all of them. So these are you know, kind of like the gilding wax, uh, Dixie Bell gilding wax, which I love, but these have other colors. So look at this turquoise one and this, let me, let me get the actual name. So this is turquoise. This one is honey gold. This one's gorgeous. So we we'll probably end up using this one. And let's see what other one I have here. I have, this is gold and this one is, oops, I have two honey golds. That means I, one of these is the shop one. Oopsies. <laughs> I'll take that back. <laughs> All right, so I'll probably, let's see, I would love to throw the turquoise one on there, but I think the main coat will be this one. Cheryl, you're ahead of me. <laughs> um, where is it? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you know what? The glass resin I did on the cow. Did you see the cow I did, the Highland cow I did last week? I filled that in with the glass resin. Love it. Um, I don't know if I posted the pictures or not. Did I? It's gorgeous. It is absolutely insane how gorgeous it is. And the pent art, that glass resin is very expensive compared to regular resin. Like um, the resin you get at the store, uh, what's it called? Amazing. Um, this one dries like glass. It is gorgeous. Let me. I'm going to pull up a picture on my phone. And I'm going to show it to you the uh, old fashioned way, but this it's the resin is just incredible. I just ordered a big one for myself here at home. Um, like I said, it is a little bit more pricey than the other, but look, can you, let's see, this is the cow lazy Susan I did last week, the Highland cow that has the glass resin on it. And it is in person. It is absolutely beautiful. And I have, I just edited the full video. I'll have that up on um, YouTube soon, but the two lives are already on the live section of YouTube, but I like to put them in both places. Oh, don't be sorry. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to take this and you just use your finger and I'm just going to highlight the edges. Okay. It's not really, and it doesn't take a bunch and you don't want it to be too bright or too flashy, because guess what? You don't want it to take away from your design. You want it to complement your design. And this is definitely complementing it. What do you think? Pretty? I think I'm going to take a little bit of the turquoise and go over the top of this just for a little bit of color. I won't use that much and I don't think it's going to show up that well on here either anyway. Oh, this is just so pretty. But like I said, I love these silver plate trays or the silver trays. I get them anytime I find them unless they're outrageously priced because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you go to the store, you pick up an item like, oh, cool, I'm going to get this. And then you see the price and you're like, oh, nope. I'll wait till that goes to half off. Sometimes um, I'm not sure who's putting the prices on these things. But all right, look. Let me turn it around. Isn't that beautiful? He. <laughs> okay, um, let's put some of the turquoise on. Now, I haven't used this one yet. This is brand new. So let's see what it looks like. I'm just going to put a little bit on top of the honey gold that I just used. So this is what it looks like. Kind of looks like his tail. Um, I'll use a different finger. Okay, so I'm putting it on. You probably can't see it on there. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's giving it like a, um, let me zoom in just so you can see. See the blue here? It's just giving it just a hint of 
turquoise. I'm not putting a lot on, but it definitely is adding to it and it's toning down that honey gold that's kind of a bright. All right. You see that? All right, let's zoom back out. Oops, that's zooming in. Sorry. <laughs> let's go back out. Come on. Ta da! All right, a little bit more. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so this one we will do the pouring glaze and can't really do the fine, I can't start the other one yet. So what I'll probably do, uh, or maybe we'll do the fine line on this one and we'll do the pouring resin on that one. Either way, it's gonna take, it, the thing about these project, the products is they take some dry time and that's what makes these lives difficult. I normally like to have stages, but it's hard to find enough of these to do stages. Mm. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to do the pouring glaze on this one because I think this one will be really pretty. Um, I would like to do the, the glass, the re pouring resin, the glass one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to show you the pouring glaze. It's last week I used this on the the picture though I stamped with the same rooster and it's gorgeous. Did I, I don't remember if I posted pictures or not. I took the pictures. I don't know if I posted them, but I'll post them after this live because you need to see them. They're so cute. Make sure it's dry. Mm, I'm going to get a little brush just in case I need to swoosh it around. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to brush on the first coat. Now, remember that I've already sealed it with that varnish, so this is not going to penetrate and go down to the rooster and change the watercolor or smear it. I just want to make sure I get a nice... There we go. And now I'm just going to pour the rest of it on there. This is What this is going to do is it's probably going to have to take all of this. Um... It's going to dry. And what I want to do is I want to use this one because I want to be able to compare this one to the clear resin by Pentart. And then I recently just used the pouring medium on a tray. I haven't shown you all that yet, but I'll, I'll be able to compare all three of them and I'll be able to tell you which one is better for which look and everything like that, dry time and stuff like that. Like the pouring medium is generally used for paint pours. I have a little bit more over here. A little bit up there. Again, you want to make sure that you, um, when this dries, you let it dry on a nice level surface. Now, I'm not sure if I should leave the middle full and thick. I guess I, I don't have really have a choice. It's going to pull up in there. Okay, so let's put this to the side. I want to put both side, both projects side by side real quick. Here's the rooster. And then here is our paint inlay, our two trays. Let me come back up here. Um, so this one, the rooster will be dry by tomorrow. This one, I'll be able to take, remove the paint inlay and show you guys how that works. And then I will show you also how the varnish, where is the varnish? This, doesn't matter what color you use, but how this, you can seal the paint inlay without having to worry about 50-50 all that. It's just, it's just so much easier when you use a solvent base over the water base. You don't get any smudges or smears. Okay. So I guess I'll just wrap this up unless anybody has any questions for me. Any questions on any of the stuff that we've used? Oh, isn't it Cheryl? I just love it. I am constantly playing. Recently I had an epic fail, <laughs> but I always like to push limits and discover and see what, 
what something can do because sometimes you can use a product that you didn't know you can use it in that way. And that's why I also like watching other people's videos because I, I like to see what they create and then, you know, take their idea, tweak it a little bit and come up with something different. And that's why I think it's so important that all of us artists and creators support each other and just have fun and build, you know, re relationships and share information. Um, I just totally love this. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I do want to say thank you for joining me. I will come on again tomorrow. I don't really know exactly what time it's going to be. I like to stay in the same, like, you know, 1 45, 2 o'clock. I'll post on the page. I won't have a live event cover. I'll just post and say I'm coming on. And if you can join me, that'd be great. If not, you know what? Catch it on the replay or just watch for the pictures. But um, once I get all these done, I always try to, like I said, I'm going to do one video and put it up. So I'll have the rooster as one video. I'll have the paint and lay flowers as a separate video. So you can just watch which ones you want. Okay, Cheryl, I appreciate that. Um, all right, guys, uh, have a fabulous day and I will catch you all tomorrow. And I'm going to go right now and I'm going to put those pictures up from the projects.